You're gonna see a low energy Jake in this one. <laughs> I'm still like not all there. Hang on, we gotta calm me down. <laughs> that's that, not big enough. You gotta, don't forget about camera number two. And this one over here. I'm ready, whatever you <laughs> are, get your shit together. Okay. Hey guys, welcome to Cutting Corners with Jim and Jake. Uh, today we're talking about hardware or more specifically insert hardware. Yep. Yeah, insert hardware. A common name for this is PEM hardware, but it's kind of like Kleenex in the industry, right? Kleenex are tissues, but it's a brand name. We personally love PEM hardware. They have a huge selection and that's what we build our catalog off of. Yeah, yeah. if you're in the industry, you're gonna know the name PEM. Uh, you're gonna know that they have, what, 100,000 different SKUs. Yeah. There's all kinds of different types. Uh, unfortunately, we can't carry everything, but we try to carry the most popular ones and we're adding new ones every day. So yeah. uh, the reason that we're talking about PEM or insert hardware is because it's a really cool way to save you guys a ton of time with, uh, you know, instead of using nuts and bolts or instead of having to weld or whatever. So it's great for uh, fast disassembly, fast assembly, uh, areas where you can't get a tool on there on the back side of it, you know, et cetera. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's talk about like the different types of hardware, right? So the main ones that we carry right now are nuts, studs, and standoffs. So yes. um, we have a kind nuts. of a couple different examples here. We can kind of hold this up. So nuts are essentially just a threaded barrel that's kind of pressed in. And you can kind of see it from the other side here kind of coming through. Standoffs are essentially a similar to a nut, right? They're pressed in from the other side. And that they have a, essentially if you mount this to here it yeah. makes it so that this material is standing off that other mating material right but the inside of it's threaded so you could have a screw that kind of comes in yep. and then the last one that we're talking about is standoffs right so this is no, going to be studs studs standoff stud yeah sorry it's still early this. early so stand or studs man you're messing this good. up I, aren't i no i believe in you Studs are gonna be a threaded barrel. We cover this in like a, a bunch of different thread sizes, yeah. right? So every, everything from I think 632 all the way to quarter 20, but we're always adding more. So check the website for the most up-to-date information on that. Yeah, um, a good application for nuts especially is in really thin materials. So oftentimes you can't get enough thread engagement on a thin material. So we'll press in a nut and then you're good to go. You can have way more strength uh, for a torque application or, you know, pull out. But actually, uh, will you talk about directional? Yeah, pull? So, yeah I think we're jumping ahead here no, a little bit. No, this whole entire thing is a great concept. So the most important thing when you're actually coming up with nuts in particular, but pretty much all hardware pressed in, is that you wanna make sure that the direction of your hardware is on the correct side. So if I'm wanting to mount something on this side of my sheet and I'm gonna have the screw coming in this side, you getting this? Right here. I want the nut to be pressed in on the opposite side. And the reason for that yeah, is that- the pull force is that way. Yeah, yeah. is as my screw kind of comes in through the part, it's gonna be pulling that nut through and also like helping with that crimp, right? And that's that's probably gets us to another really important topic, which is all of these are a mechanically crimped, like pressed in feature into these parts, right? Yeah, they actually deform. Uh, here, this will be a good shot for B-roll. But what's really interesting is when you receive these parts on some of the hardware, it's actually uh, hexagonal or octagonal, even though we cut a circular hole. So we'll cut a circular hole and then shove in this octagon shape. And so it distorts the material around it, displaces the material, making a really, really uh, strong bond. So even on something tiny like this, we'll use up to eight tons of pressure, you know, eight tons on the end of this thing. Uh, to, to squish that in. So it becomes fused, basically. Yeah. 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 And so that mechanical bond, especially when you have like that different shape getting pressed into it, is extremely good at holding up to torsional strength, right? So yeah. when it kind of comes down to like putting a torque value on these, they hold up to a standard nut torque value. Uh, if you've ever used a rib nut, you know, with the like the Harbor Freight cheapo rib nut crimper thing, and it's spun on you you're gonna be really scared of, of hardware. Traditionally, you're like, God damn rib nuts. You know, they screw me up all the time. These are totally different. These are not gonna spin on you. It's totally different than what you've experienced with rib nuts. I say that because 
I've had many rib nuts on the backside of a dashboard totally. spin on me and I can't get them. Yeah, I mean, so with these though, so that actually gets us into another kind of topic on this, right? So with rib nuts and stuff, you can do them into a blind hole, right? So you can drill a hole into the side of your body, yeah. you can shove that in there and it's just like a rivet, right? You're creating that crimped back on them. With these, you have to have access to the back side of your hole. And so yes. let's kind of talk about when you're designing something that is gonna have pressed in hardware, um, to understand the tools that we're using to press these in is that we have to have access to the back of your part and the top of your part. So this tool right here in particular is actually for these studs, right? And so these studs would get put in from the backside and you can't really see them because they're flush mounted with the powder coating. But then this would be on the back here. This part comes in over the top and then we apply the pressure from the top and the bottom to get that in there. One important thing is, is that you can stay in here close here, Keen. So if that stud was really close to that bend, you can see that I'm gonna start having interference in that corner. And uh, when I get really kind of too close is that we're not gonna be able to put a stud really, really close to that bend line because of the diameter of this tool, right? Additionally, is if this had another flange over the top of it, I don't have access to get to put this tool in here. And so if this was a box and you wanted a stud in here, we have some specialty tools, but sometimes we just can't flat out get into that spot. And so it's something to remember that we need to have access to both sides of that flange when you're putting in hardware. Yeah. Um, because it is uh, mechanically inserted and we distort the material uh, in order to fuse it together, we have to be very, very precise on hole size. Uh, usually we're targeting a plus zero thou and minus maybe a couple thou. We have to be very, very accurate to get these to work correctly. So uh, it's a pain as a designer to figure that out. So we just do it for you. Uh, you can actually spot any hole. If you just draw any size hole, quarter inch hole, half inch hole, 10 thou hole, it doesn't matter. Pick that hole, pick the hardware that you wanna be in that hole, we'll resize everything for you. So uh, it's a huge time savings. You don't have to do this huge chart yep. of lookup tables like a drill index or something like that. Yeah. Uh, traditionally, that's what you have to do, but we try to take that pain uh, away from it. Yeah, and it's actually been a really nice thing for me, and that goes for ta actually all of our whole operations, right? Yeah. So tapping, countersinking, hardware installation, we'll do all of the resizing, dimple, dimple forming, right? Oh yeah, dimple, yeah. Dimple. Um, so dimple forming, all of those, you're gonna be able to select an eighth inch hole and turn it into, you know. Yeah, on dimple, quarter, you could turn it into a three inch hole. Could turn it into a three inch dimple, yeah, right? Yeah, but we just do it all for you. Um, so. So, so going off of that though, let's talk about the different materials that we actually allow this in, right? Yeah, seven. So we all have seven different materials. Um, the main ones are 5052 aluminum. Oh my gosh, you're gonna test me. Yeah. 6000 series aluminum. Um, we have- Mild the steel. Mild steel, 304 stainless, 316 stainless. Oh no, um, G90. Oh yeah. And there's one more, we're missing one. It's gonna be right here. Yeah, I don't know what it's right it is. Here whatever one we missed. It's all the common stuff. I love how you guys rely on me when you mess up. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so what we have you for. Um, um, yeah, so seven oh, different materials. So and which the, means- Within those, actually though, about these. is different thicknesses. So, you know, here right here, we have, these are both, I believe, 5052 aluminum because they're bent, but I have two different thicknesses here. Um, if I had to guess, if I, I don't have a, I don't have a caliper on it, but what do you think? 060 and 187. 060 and 187 here, right? Both of them have, you know, standoffs, nuts and stuff inserted into them. Um, and that kind of goes off of the idea of, you know, it's a thread replacement right here, right? Yeah. So um, let's talk about what the you thing. Talking? What am I talking about? I'm I don't talking, know. No, I'm talking about the idea that like, what are these replacing, right? We could just tap this. We could just tap this. Yes. Right. Let's talk about like why maybe you would do hardware over just tapping 187 mile, or, you know, aluminum yeah. or mild steel. Um, oh, you want me to, okay. I'm gonna continue this well, conversation Well, I was now. gonna say every time I've tapped something, especially if I assemble and disassemble multiple times, yeah. that thread starts to go away because the parent material isn't gonna be as strong as something like hardware. Is that yeah. where you I, would go? No, that's okay. kind of where I was kind of going. And he's right? a mechanical engineer. I have no idea what I'm doing. I, I mean, just because I'm I just mechanical show up. doesn't yeah. mean I know what I'm doing. Um, yeah, no, so the amount of threads that you can get into a thinner piece of material is also a huge bonus yep. when it kind of comes down to tapping. You could theoretically tap this with a fine thread and get a couple threads in there, yep. but the odds are gonna be high that you're gonna end up pulling those threads out when you tighten it up. 
as well as the the zinc plated uh, hardware is substantially stronger threads than aluminum yeah because um, this is a it's a steel base it's a steel that's been base zinc plated so yeah uh instead of the softness and ductility of aluminum you're going into steel with your most likely steel hardware yeah yeah exactly yeah uh zinc is a lube we talked yeah. about that so that's the other thing if you're going let's say you tap stainless and you put a piece of uh you know you put a bolt into tap stainless we all know that that's a huge pain in the ass and most likely it's going to gall up or you have to use a, a ton of anti-seize using hardware um, is going to prevent all that galling because you're not going directly into stainless you're going into yeah you know it's zinc plated zinc plated you know, and, yeah so it's, it acts as a lubricant it's also anti-corrosive yes so it can be used in a in an environment that has like salt water and that kind of stuff it's going to yeah. hold up over time and stuff it's not just bare yeah um additionally um we do have stainless hardware though right and so stainless yes. hardware is great when a clean environment needs to be used say it's in a kitchen something or um a yeah. science experiment that you, you can't have do animals in that you have to do like a lot of cleaning sorry <laughs> that, that comes from my last <laughs> job you can't you can't do like dissimilar materials or something yeah yeah so i don't know what i don't know what you were doing to animals we should not we should keep going there's a lot of experiments talk about yeah zinc yeah so and stainless versus stainless and aluminum yeah so um because we can't put stainless hardware into aluminum we can't put stainless hardware into aluminum, and that's mostly because of the pressures that it requires for that that engagement, that mechanical engagement when we do the bonding or the press. Uh, and that's because the aluminum and the stainless is too just too dissimilar, right? So the aluminum yeah. is going to be too soft. It's going to be mushed. Yeah, for the amount of pressure that we have to put on that stainless hardware to distort it, all, all that pressure goes into the parent material and blows it out. Yeah, so it, it'll. Uh, it'll turn a hole into an oval basically and then we also can't do zinc um plated hardware in stainless because that zinc will actually react with the stainless and cause other issues oh yeah well i just said that we could though oh well you shouldn't because i was that. saying the benefits okay cut that part out i guess Shit. rewind do, do like a little <laughs> yeah. rewind yeah. scene <laughs> I'm back. okay i thought i thought because i was saying you know because stainless galls so in, in so we, stainless, you can't so what put is zinc this? hardware. Is this stainless hardware? Yes. Oh, all right. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yep. Can we, should we like... I had something in my hand. I can oh. clap for you. Okay. Okay, let's talk about... Um, we talked about access. We talked about collisions and access. So let's, yeah. Let's, uh, should we, let's skip to... Let's talk about this. Yeah. Um, so we have really good examples here of that. Yeah. Um, so when you choose powder coating on your parts, right? We don't want powder coating to get inside of those threads or you're gonna end up yeah. having to chase them or on the external threads, you're gonna have to run a die on it. Yeah, so these have been capped. Uh, we actually insert the hardware before any powder coating or, or mm -hmm. plating? plating no, after, after. After plating, plating, before powder coating. Yep. So we'll cap it and we'll plug it uh, before it goes in then remove everything so it goes to you. Yes. Uh, again, you don't have to worry about that, but you will get nice, clean hardware, even if it's been powder coated. Yeah. Yeah. So like this part right here is been zinc plated. Yes. And it has the hardware pressed in afterwards. Yep. So. Um, okay. Let's talk about alternatives. So let's say that insert hardware is not going to be a great fit for you for some reason. Uh, what else could I use? Well, we talked about it at the beginning, rib nuts. So yeah. say it is going to be something that's a blind hole. Yeah. Um, you can always purchase your own rib nuts and stuff. So just you got to make sure your hole is sized to it. Like we can cut it to the rib nut yeah. sized hole and then you can um, install those yourself. Um, nuts and bolts, just, just traditional yeah. nuts and bolts. Traditional nut and bolt, obviously. Um, you can also weld it. You know, we, we talked to, in a previous episode about, you know, tab and slot construction and self fixturing and how it's easy to just do a real quick plug weld. Uh, however, you're not going to have the benefits of disassembly or easy assembly you know, if you go to welding. So yeah, uh, glues, adhesives, glues, adhesives, just tapping, tapping the actual part like we talked about at the beginning. Yep. This part I could tap. I could run a washer for the spacer to do the standoff and get the same effect. I would probably recommend tapping if my material is thick enough and I'm going to assemble it once, you know, yep. one and done. Put some Loctite on there. You're good. For something that could be disassembled in the future, I always go towards uh, insert hardware. Additionally, if you're going to do a run of like 50 of something, 
that yeah. you're gonna be doing a, like a say assembly line if you're doing some manufacturing like small batch manufacturing yeah hardware is really great because it's one less thing you have to have on your assembly lines to stock it's one less thing to have your you know employees handling or having you know to tighten it's also one less tool that you have to have on your assembly line yeah. right yeah. i don't have to have a tool for this nut i only have to have a tool for the screw that's going to be going into it yeah. right so yeah. it's a great way to actually turn a two tool um you know 100 piece hardware assembly into a 50 piece one tool assembly yeah uh we should talk about cost too yeah so compared to tapping actually for us it's it's very similar especially with uh mm -hmm. you know insert nuts and as far as like the alternative being a traditional nut and bolt the cost of that nut and bolt versus the cost of this insert hardware is usually comparable it is yeah yeah you're not gonna you're probably not gonna find nut and bolts or even a nut so say we just focus on just the nut side of this right yeah um each one of these is going to be very comparable if not cheaper to the nut yeah. that you would buy at ace hardware or any of your box stores uh, well especially in quantity so the thing i want to talk about is like we have a uh decaying price strategy as quantity goes up not only overall in multiple quantities like if i 10 of these units but it's also per unit on the piece itself so this first one let's say it was uh, a dollar the second one was probably 80 cents and then the third one goes down a little bit and they eventually get cheaper and then you multiply that times our quantity discount if you needed 10 of these and things start to get really inexpensive yeah yeah and it's, and it's one less thing that you have to like come up with you know in the background right so yeah. it's not like i'm going to order this part and then i have to also get my nuts and stuff ordered you know from a different you know supplier yeah um, you can get like a finished ready to go bolt together part and stuff from us that has anodizing hardware already installed um, it's a much more polished thing. Um, one last thing that I didn't really, um, that we missed a little bit and things to consider or avoid is that when you start doing a lot of like pressed in hole operations that are really close to each other. Oh yeah. We, we're putting so much pressure here and deforming these areas that we're actually expanding the metal out. And right, and so you can start to get this warpage in your parts um, that you can see on this one right here, your spacing's pretty good. It might have a little bit of warpage. This one right here, we're starting to get on the idea that we're going to have a lot yeah. of pressure kind of put in here and working out. This is we're an gonna extreme get example. Yeah. Very this extreme is, example. But just know that yeah. we can get bowed, especially in long, skinny geometry. Yep. You know, uh, it's the same similar effect as if you were using an English wheel. You're starting to stretch that material yeah. in an ununiform, non-uniform? The non-uniform. Non-uniform. Yeah. I like to make up words. And um, then, yeah, and then uh, you're going to see that less in a in a thicker material than a thinner material. Correct. So anyway, if you guys have questions about PEM hardware or insert hardware, feel free to go to our website, check out our services page. We document uh, every single piece of hardware, all the specs on there, all yeah. the torque values. We also everything. have a ton of blogs that go over, yeah. you know, design considerations and stuff that we have a, a bunch of great writers that contribute to it on a pretty daily basis. Yeah. But the best thing is upload your part to Sun Cut Send. Uh, Make sure it has a couple holes in there. And then as you're configuring your part, choose hardware, play with it, we'll see what happens. Anyway, thanks guys. Love you, bye. But, oh yeah, love you, bye.